this week at the tiny house. Things do not go as planned. Will the blood, sweat, and tears be worth it? I should have taken this cable into the solar shop, but it wasn't in my van. It was down at the tiny house. Welcome to episode two of the Tiny Cabin Renovation and Restoration Project. I was nervous about how introducing something new to this channel would go, and I'm so grateful and happy with the response. Your comments have been wonderful, and I want to answer some of the questions that you posed to me in the comments section. For this next piece of the job, I am going to need some serious protection. A lot of people who make a full-time living on YouTube do integrations or product placement or sponsorships. And my channel is still such a baby, so small, um, that I haven't done any of these yet. And I'm not there yet. I still have to work a full-time job because the thing that I'm like blown away by so far is how the community has just come. And even for such a small channel, y'all are supporting me and showing up as much as I feel like I can share with you and encourage you and that is, makes it all worth it. Um, this is not paid. I am not receiving any financial uh, compensation for doing this, but it was something that I needed. I am working on a tiny house. It is off grid, out of cell phone reception. There is no electricity, it's not, <laughs> no anything, no water, no electricity, no internet. Um, so I have, wanna do some building and I need power tools. So that's where this comes in. So let's stop messing around and let's go out to the forest and take this with us. Yeah! So we will have power and we will have protection. Very important. I don't plan on moving out of Siren, my step van, completely as I love her very much and I love van life and traveling way too much to give up on it. This property is not mine. I did not buy it. And I'm still dreaming of my own land someday in future when I can afford it. But in the meantime, I am practicing all my land tending, building construction skills, and connecting with nature in the interim. I am doing this build as an exchange The property owner, who's a dear one to me, intends this cabin to be a remote, off-grid retreat space for our community, which I will have access to and get to use sometimes, which sounds really delightful to me to balance being in my van and being stationary. I plan on keeping the cabin completely off-grid. That's my favorite way of being. It'll be wired with its own batteries, solar system, eventually, and mostly 12 volt sockets and outlets. My first order of business on the tiny house today was to set up a small workstation in this shelter logic. A tool shed, a desk, a bench, and a supply storage. I would like to introduce you to the tiny house's first ever power system, the EB3A from Bluetti. I'm very grateful to Bluetti for providing me this power bank. It only takes 40 minutes to reach 80% charge from an AC outlet. This, this connection, 
is going to be amazing. I cannot wait to hook this up to the solar panel that has been taking up an enormous amount of space in my van for the last week. This is where we have it. If you're using this at home for a backup power source, for your appliances, if you're in a place that gets power outages frequently, or if you have a life preserving device that you need to keep as a backup, you can char charge it off your normal house power. I don't have that here, so I'm gonna be plugging it in and charging it off solar. I cannot wait. A 600 watt pure sine wave inverter and a 268 watt hour lithium LIFE PO4 battery. This battery is ready to power your summer fun, or in my case, power tools, wherever I am. You can control and optimize it too via the Blue Eddy app, which I currently don't have cell service here to download. It has one car outlet at 120 watts max. It has one USB-C port at 100 watts max. It has two USB-A ports, 15 watt max for your cell phones. And it has two AC outlets at 600 watts continuous power, which is what I am loving using on the tiny house. And the top of it has one cable free phone charging. Charging inputs for the EB3A are wall charging, solar panel charging, which I should have working really soon. Or you can charge it from your 12 volt outlet in your car. Woo. <sighs> this is a real cabin renovation. This space has been overrun by rodents. It probably leaks, as you can see in some of the walls. It is not watertight. And really, we have to start from the ground up, floor, insulation, waterproofing, all the way in before we start even thinking about what's on the inside and making it into a livable space. Part of what we're also doing is gonna knock out walls, make the space bigger. This is a huge job. But what I wanna do first Hopefully, the generator won't run all this time. Um, the reason I have the generator running is because I have two solar panels. I have a 180 watt solar panel and I have a 375. Now the Blue Eddy EB3A has a maximum input charging from solar of 200 watts. That rolls out my big panel and I'm really a bit bummed because I brought that solar panel over to this area in my van specifically so I could charge this without having to run any kind of obnoxious generator. But I do have a 180 watt panel, but the connectors on the 180 watt panel are the flat square ones, not the MC4 connectors. So I have to take one of these spare connectors I've got, go to the solar, ship, solar shop, buy some MC4 connectors, cut off like the other rings that I've got on it and make some so that I can even use my 180 watt panel to charge this. So that's annoying, but it's only annoying because my panel doesn't or didn't originally come with MC4 connectors and some small portable panels don't. I think the really thin flexible panels quite often come with MC4 connectors, but not all small panels come with MC4 connectors. So they're easy to get, they're easy to order, it's easy to make up your own connection. It's just holiday weekend, everything is closed, including the solar shop, and so I have to wait till Tuesday. Anyway, I have some time, so I'm gonna do some work. We'll just have to deal with the dulcet tones of the generator charging the battery, because that, in reality, is what it's like to work off grid. If it rains, I would be doing the same thing. I think the floor in here has the potential to have asbestos in it. Now, I am not taking any chances and I'm going to gear up in these large, this is the smallest size I could find, heavy coveralls um, and an a, a asbestos friendly or not friendly um, mask respirator that's the word I was looking for respirator because I'm not taking any risks with my health in this job the reason we're taking
taking the floor out is because the tiles have to come out, but the floor here is just uh, bent, it is curved, but I want to insulate underneath it and I'm not crawling underneath, so we're going to start from the bottom and work up. This is what I mean by rodent. They've come in and they've shredded some of the previous insulation and just destroyed it. And I don't want to touch it. I don't want to go anywhere near it. But we've got to clean it up so that we can take the floor out. Right, time to take the whole floor up. I don't know if you can hear me, but I'm gonna try. This is great. This thing is great. This is helping me get into the corners where this doesn't cut in those corners I can go in. This is cab loose, so I need to tighten it. I can go and find the key because I don't know where it is, but I'm gonna have this floor up in no time. This took two full days, longer than I expected. I had to pull in the help of a crowbar and a mallet because it just wasn't coming up. But I managed to do it all with the battery powered saw, the generator and my battery pack. The generator because I just unboxed the battery and it wasn't fully charged. So, charged it up using that and I'm going to soon get the MC4 connectors so that I can plug the battery into my solar and then we won't have to hear engine noise at all. It's amazing to have a generator as a backup but fuck, it is not my way of life. And this is great. You are asking, why did I remove the floor? Well, the walls were built on top of the floor. So, and the blue tile, we think had asbestos in it. Um, and it was glued to the floor. So we had to get rid of the asbestos. I'm going to come around eventually and just trim the whole way around. Probably with a sawzall when I get one. The reason I've done this is now I can insulate. So my first step is to be going to get some wire mesh to put those in pockets through each of the floor beams. Once we've uh, put the, that down, then we might put foam board or rock wool, probably foam board, maybe foam board then rock wool, I'm not quite sure, but so we're gonna go metal, vapor barrier, insulation, new floor. 
And the reason we didn't just put a floor over top of the asbestos is this is how much headroom and maybe even less than that. So like half a foot, three quarters of a foot of headroom for me, anyone taller than me, if you put more on top of the existing floor, you lose headroom. We're also going to be insulating up here. So I wanted to make sure that there was enough space below and above for all the bits and pieces we want to do. So that'll be exciting because that's the next step. But the, after that, the next job is to remove this wall and move it out. That wall is going to get moved out in line with this so that we have this extra three feet, three and a half feet, four feet of living area to build in, which will be really nice and it'll make the space feel much bigger. So that's exciting. Um, it is a tiny house. It is a kid's playhouse turned into a tiny cabin and it has gone from being a toxic, hazardous, rodent infested, gross pile into a construction site and eventually a livable space. So all my blood, sweat and tears is going to be worth it. I am so excited. This place was put together with nails though, so I think my uh, crowbar is going to be my tool of choice for the next few weeks. Right, time to jump in the river and wash off. Clean up. <sighs> I'll spare you the joy, but know that I'm spending the next couple of hours tidying up. This field is magical, from the lilies and their seed pods to all of these wild onions, all wild onions, aren't they beautiful? For water source, I hope to make a rainwater collection system as I want to put in an outdoor bath and shower, it's going to be beautiful. But it is also really close to the river, so that could be something accessible for some water, but it would need purifying before consuming. I have big dreams for this tiny house, but I am determined to make it an all-weather dwelling. So starting with a good base and installating from the ground up is important, and unfortunately has created a lot of extra work for me at the beginning. My body, after all the grueling work, was exhausted, but the water is always my healer. Soothing my aches, providing buoyant relief. And also an endless source of excitement for my curiosity. What lives in these waters? What lurks beneath the surface of this clear, sparkling river? house I have a small 600 watt uh, battery pack which I'm using to charge my batteries for my power tools and plug in some of my power tools I have a small 180 watt solar panel because my 375 is actually too big for the 600 watt batteries input but I have a cable and that comes from the panel but it doesn't fit the battery so the battery needs MC4 connectors and the uh, solar panel takes these big square connectors. I'll insert pictures here. So I'm going to take one of my spare cables for the solar panel and get MC4 connectors put on the end of it, which is very exciting. Super cool. Um, once I've done that, then I can charge that battery at the tiny house in the sunshine during the summer, which is going to be amazing. And it will mean I won't have to run the generator, which is, in my opinion, a huge win. So... Let's get on the road, start up the vehicle, go for a drive to the solar panel shop.
this. This piece goes into my solar panel and I want to take those crocodile clamps off and put MC4 connectors on them. But I think I want to keep the crocodile connectors because they might be useful. love being able to go into a shop where people know the answers to my questions and are willing to ask, answer somebody who's gonna only spend say 60 bucks like I'm not a huge big ticket customer for them I did buy my um, solar panels from them but they're still willing to answer questions about how to connect things or which way around the connector goes or why a 375 watt panel won't power my 600 watt uh, battery. And the answer to that is, which I'm sure some of you techie whiz whizzes know, but I didn't know, um, a big panel outputs a higher voltage DC current. So a 375 watt panel outputs about a 40 volt current. And the panel is on, uh, the battery, sorry, is only rated to take from 12 to 28 volts so it would kind of cook it whereas up to 200 watts for my 180 panel it, it will output about 20 watts so it will be totally fine for my battery charging i have a solar charge controller which can take up to 100 watts so if i have two solar panels that both output at 40 volts that's only 80 volts which is still less than what the charge controller can take to then charge the battery. Really fascinating stuff. Anyway, I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I'm here. And I'm now glad that I can charge the tiny house power bank so that I can charge my power tools again. This little converter is gonna save the day. provides a solar charging cable. I'm not sure this comes with every battery. It may be an optional accessory. Um, I'm super stoked to have it because I can then use this, which I just recently got from the solar store, uh, to attach it to here. This is the connector for my solar panel. And these are the MC4 connectors. Let me show you up close. So I have that, which will connect to the Bluetti solar connector. So, positive, oh no. Shit. They're the wrong way around. No. I was hoping to resolve this video and end it. But this is the positive wire and these two are the same. I looked up the thing online when I went to get it and it is incorrect. So here endeth the video. Unfortunately, I cannot charge this today with the solar panel because my MC4 connectors are back to front. <sighs> Damn it. Oh, I'm so disappointed. I should have taken this cable from the Blue Eddy into the solar shop, but it wasn't in my van. It was down at the tiny house and I was out and not here. A huge thank you for Blue Eddy for providing me this battery to help me with the tiny house build. 
we will get there. I am gonna get this thing working for me with the panel I got. If you're gonna get one of these, buy the panel directly from Blue Eddy and it will save you all of this hassle. I'm so grateful to have this. This is making a big difference to my ability to exist peacefully in nature and work on the tiny house. And I can't wait to show you the progress that we have made. Thanks for watching. If you really enjoyed this episode and are looking forward to seeing more of the build, rebuild, construction progress, I'm so excited that, to start this series and have you follow along and continue. This is going to be an amazing space when it's finished. I plan to build it like a work of art, like an art project. I think when I bought, built Siren, my step van, it was built out of necessity, built in a time frame because I needed to live in it and I had a time frame to get to living in it. So this space feels like I have the luxury of being a bit more of a perfectionist and doing a bit more artistic design, which is kind of neat because I've never really tried to do that. So I get to learn a whole lot new skills, like level up some of the tools that I'm using. So I'm actually using the right tools for the right job. Huge thank you to my Patreons who have been hearing about this project for a while and cheering me on and supporting me. <sighs> this sweaty monster is happy to be done. Phase one. Okay, I'll see you all next week in the next video. Bye!